There's three basic ways we can communicate with a cow. And their preferred method is through eyesight. All right, so they want to be able to see you. What are they doing right now? Every one of them but one or two is watching. All right? So they're wondering what these idiots are about to do to me because they know something's up. And so that line of sight is their preferred method of communicating. And if we don't keep that in mind, we can do a lot of things that are counterintuitive to a cow. Where do we normally get to move cows? Behind them. Where's the one place they can't see where the flip? Behind them, all right? We start seeing a little issues with some of the things we routinely do in the cattle business. Now we can work from the side, and the side includes a, almost back behind the hip, but just not right behind them, all the way up to in front of them. So what I'm gonna try to show you how to do is to draw cattle to you a little more, work more from the front and the side, and get cattle to do what you want them to do. The other means of communicating with livestock is gonna be sound. And so noise is fairly distracting to a cow. Now think about yourselves, and you live in the country, what is the main thing you appreciate about living in the country? It's quiet. What everybody says, it's quiet. What happens when you get in a noisy situation? It's not quiet. A lot of people start getting nervous. They don't like it. They try to get away from it. Same thing with a cow. Think about where a cow lives. They're quiet all the time until a guy shows up or a woman shows up and goes hollering at them. Sound is effective when used in moderation. Same thing in people. Now the tone of your voice, the volume, everything else has something to do to it as well. If I walked up and asked this young person to do something very nicely, would they be likely to do it? Probably. If I walked over there and screamed at him to tell him to go do something, would they do it? They'd probably go get under your arm right quick if they had a chance. They'll stick their head in the corner, won't they? What happens to a lot of cows? And we've invented all sorts of round corral systems now so cows can't get their head in the corner because we're hollering at them. I think we can alleviate a lot of that engineering that we normally do to get cows to work if we learn how to communicate with them. So that's why that sound is so important. Use it, use it sparingly. Now I used to tell everybody if I could do anything, just get them to be quiet when they went home. But I also realized that some of you might explode if you couldn't make some racket every once in a while. So use it, but use it sparingly. Use it in the right place that can be very effective. The third way to communicate with cattle is through touch. And how many, not, and don't let it be when they're running over the top of you and you run the hand down a belly or something. About the only place touch comes into play is when you get in a confinement situation like this, and about the only place I'd ever do it would be in this lead up to the chute, or maybe in a crowd tub or something coming around. We're gonna talk more about facilities as we get to that point as well. I want to get these cattle where I can get them to turn away from me, and the reason turning away from me is so important, if a cow does not feel comfortable turning away from you, they don't trust you. And until I get their trust, and that's one signal I'll have, because otherwise they're gonna to turn toward me so they can keep the So if you work your cattle at home, you can tell pretty quick whether or not they're gonna trust you or not. So here, I just wanna get these started and go to this other corner. I'm just gonna move them a little bit. And I'm gonna take a slow approach to start with, because these cattle have a lot of flight. If I were to move quickly, all I have to do is take a step and I'm going to start moving. Now if I want to stop moving, I can take pressure off. See how easy that worked? But we have to be able to put pressure, take pressure off. Now if I want to start moving again, I'll just step in. And this is stepping in that flight zone. Now I'm going to step out here and by changing my angle and going with them a little bit, I can keep the front end of the cattle straight. They're not turning. If I want to turn them around, I may do this a different way. I'll get them over here and turn them back the other way. 
Now, when you get cattle and you have cattle like this that are a little nervous, now if I want to stop movement, I can go with the flow and stop it. That's something else you want to teach animals to do because you hate chasing cows, don't you? But if you can teach them to stop, like we're doing right now, as I step back down their side. So you want to be able to put the gas on and put the brakes on on a set of cattle. Now I don't like her turning toward me. She still doesn't trust me. I want to be able to stop and turn and stay straight. So I'm going to try to draw her attention back to me. No, she's, now she didn't trust me. She turned back and went to her buddies. That's fine because she also turned her head away from me. Now as I step to this side, I should be able to send the cattle back to this other corner. I'm just teaching them to respond to my position right now. I want to be able to stop them. I don't want to get to her. They like going to that corner. They've discovered that's a fairly safe zone. But I've got them to stop and stay straight. So now I'm going to turn them back by stepping across on this side. I can do what we call push on an eye. I'm going to focus on her right eye and turn her head around. And I can send the whole group back. But if I hadn't worked on getting them to stop and notice I had to get a little further out in front because the draw of the cattle going back to their trailer is stronger than their desire to stay on this end. So once again, we're gaining on them. They're already stopping and working as a group. If you've got a lot of a set of cattle that have not been worked before, they may scatter like chickens. So part of the process is to teach them to work as a group so you can use their natural instincts to get flow and motion going. One of the cardinal rules about a tub, a bud box, or any kind of crowding area that you'd have it a set up, is you never store cattle in it, and you never put more in there than can flow out of it the box or the tub or V shape, whatever you have back there, is a flow through part of the system. Invariably, we build a short lead up to the chute and a big old storage area in the back. The reason that doesn't work very well is we lose movement in our cattle. We want them coming in there and coming right back out. All right, and this bud box will help demonstrate that very effectively. Once again, I'm gonna send them down this other side. That's something we did, I hadn't mentioned. I want them to learn to work from both sides. Now this pen, I've always let them come down this side. Now I wanna train them to go down the other side and come out of this corner once again. And you'll notice that it's a different angle. I might have to put more pressure on them to get them to move out of that corner. All right? Need them to move out of that corner. So I can then turn them and bring them back this way. All the things that they like going around you, they like following one another. And they will see, as you'll walk down their side, I can send them forward. Now I need to just send them down to the other end of this little box. You'll notice how just that little bit of noise actually excited them a little bit. As we get here, now they're starting to turn. Need to get more of them going as they start. And I've got to put enough pressure. Now notice where I'm at. This is where these, I'm what, this little cat doesn't want to go. There. She's pretty nervous, pretty cautious. This is where, with the, since you can't leave that head gate alone, this is going to give us a good way to demonstrate what you need to do next. That's a pretty good step up into that chute with scales on it. I want to come to the front, walk down those cattle, and send them forward.
and I've got to stay up here on the front, draw the eye around. y'all but to me that was an easy way to get cattle to go through a system now you notice I came to the front and walked down their side how did I tell them to go forward out here walk down their side so you start training them outside when you get in here do the same thing you walk past their point of balance they know to go forward now if that little heifer hadn't stepped up, that's where touch would have come into play. I'd take and run my hand down her back from her shoulders to her hip. That'll send them forward like sticking them with a hot shot. Try that before you use a hot shot. <laughs> 